Hi there, welcome to Microsoft Intune Training Series. Within this training series, we are going to learn about complete Microsoft Intune Training. And uh, this is the part number 8 of the series number 8, where uh, we are going to learn more about Windows 10 enrollment and the configuration, as well as how to configure that and validating the license and how we can enroll a Windows device to Microsoft intern and then we can check the logs during the enrollment process so all of this stuff we are gonna learn within this lecture I hope you are more excited if you like it uh, this entire uh, session please do subscribe and share uh, within the community that really helps us that being said let's jump into the demo to configure Windows enrollment process you should be able to go to devices from an endpoint manager admin center and as I explained earlier also you can either go by platform or device enrollment options by going to the device enrollment options you will have another sub uh, navigation with respect to the platform type so in our case uh, we are working with Windows enrollment so you could configure here or if you're working with Apple or Android you could directly configure here but the right way of learning for the beginners would be always by platform click on Windows and uh, click on Windows enrollment this will be really helpful for the beginners and we are gonna work on almost everything here but at this session we are more concentrated or concerned about the enrollment within this lesson so we are going to focus on enrollment because that's the first step to enroll the devices once the device is enrolled we can work with the applications we can work with the uh, compliance policies we can work with the configuration profiles or we can push the PowerShell scripts and Windows updates and feature updates all of that stuff can be really um, really we can have a look on it and we can work on them but for now we're just trying to our best to learn about enrollment process in case if you are trying to enroll the devices you should be able to configure from here automatic enrollment option and if you look at here the MDM scope is currently set to none in case if you want to configure this to a specific set of pilot users then you would be selecting here a pilot user group that was created from here uh, let's say there's an all into pilot users group then you would be you know, selecting that user so this entire scope of the enrollment is uh, associated with that group level meaning whoever the part of that group can enroll the devices so if you open uh, to everyone for example to set it to all so whoever have the internal license can enroll in Microsoft Intune and in case if you selected only group in this group whoever the users are there and that's the first criteria and the second criteria is are they have internal license if they have the internal license and they are part of this group then they can enroll so in our case we are trying to open for everyone so I'm saving the data this will change the configuration for any user who has the Intune license can enroll the Windows 10 devices. That's all. It's so easy to configure for Windows devices since it's just the Microsoft product. I mean both the Intune as well as the Windows both are for Microsoft so easy for enrollment options. We will work on other concepts like Windows Autopilot. So this is where we are going to configure all this Autopilot configuration in the upcoming lectures. Just wanted to give you the full navigation and full information for you within this Windows enrollment what all other options that we have. So post to the enrollment options you can also configure enrollment status page. This is a page like a uh, uh, like a screen that comes when a user before you know login it just validate whether all the required applications and the compliance and the settings are available then only you can allow the user to log in or use the device such kind of you know configuration if you really need it you could actually use the ESP when I say ESP this is called enrollment status space in short we call ESP most of the internet admins calls as uh, ESP and you could you know check out here the configuration that is available at this point of time it says that no 
as soon as I select as yes show profile configuration I have an option in case if anything goes wrong uh, 60 minutes is the timeline such kind of you know bigger configuration is available we would work on this configuration when we move to Windows autopilot and in fact that's where it is mostly used but for the normal Windows enrollment we no need to you know, work on it on top of it this is the first demo that we are trying to do on a windows enrollment so i don't want to you know make it more complex uh, for you to understand so but this is just an a page that can um, give you in the during the initial setup of the windows uh, device or the any of the device uh, it can be uh, that kind of your device in the, during the first user logon option. Now let's understand the code concept that behind the enrollment process. If you know this code concept, it would be easy for you to troubleshoot in further on any kind of issues that are uh, that might encounter. Let me open up here a drawing. Let's say you have a device called a Windows device, and simply this Windows device try to enroll to your MDM. So your MDM server is nothing but in this case Intune server. So during this enrollment process, before it actually enrolled to Microsoft Intune or MDM server, it actually have to go back to another server called Azure AD. So meaning this device have to first register in Azure AD. Once it is registered, this specific setting will go back and will say to MDM that hey I have a device please get it enrolled into MDM that's how it's gonna work so what we try to explain here is any device it will have to go to Azure Active Directory first and then register or enrolled or join there are different words this is called the registration process so the device have to be registered within the Microsoft Azure AD as an identity server so Azure AD is the identity server that's why it has to register so the registration process depends on these scenarios if the device is just called Azure AD register or maybe Azure AD joint or Azure AD hybrid AD join. So the first one is AD join, meaning the device is enrolled into Azure AD, very similar to your domain join machine, and it has a full permission. So it has a token to talk, and all of that stuff can be done. There's another option called AD registered, meaning it, it was not enrolled, but it is just the a kind of personal device just registered uh, to access the data that is available within your azure cloud or maybe with the help of azure ad identity as a solution and when it comes to hybrid ad your on-prem uh, your on-prem ad with azure ad if the same device is joining the both the places we call it as the hybrid ad join so this is the main uh, difference uh, when it comes to when it comes to join type this is what it's going to show up here and the once we join the machine uh, to Azure AD it will show up here so I'm not making making uh, confusing you here the thing is that each device has to be first registered or join or whatever the terms that we talked here so any of this condition should be true within the Azure AD then it will move further with your endpoint manager for enrollment process in a simple words if a device is not joined to azure ad or not registered or any of these uh, things are not met that device cannot be enrolled into intune so the first place is to get it join or get it um, get it uh, a join type here and then move to your endpoint manager that's how it's gonna work so in other way you are actually making uh, Intune enrollment before Intune enrollment as part of Intune enrollment you are actually making the device the device to join type making and then it is going to Intune for managing the device so now when it comes to the troubleshooting you have to look into the two areas one would be the joining type or the join process as well as 
MTM enrollment process. The two different places you might have to look into the logs. Not just the MTM enrollment, you might have to work with uh, Azure AD guys also to see if the device is not joined or joined. If it is not joined, why? All of that stuff to be you know, validated. One of the major difference between AAD joint or Azure AD registered between any other scenarios that we talked just now like Azure AD joint or hybrid AD joint or domain joint scenarios the most common uh, difference that we can talk about is uh, AAD registered devices is for personally owned uh, corporate enabled devices meaning you are enabling the application on a personal devices belongs to the user so that device belongs to the user but you are allowing the users to use the applications on that so that's the level of permission that's the level of security that we might have to you know look into it so this about this a uh, complete slide or this specific topic i'm going to talk on a different lecture but for now this is just a quick heads up that there is a difference during the enrollment process and also you will have to consider the number of devices that you are allowing as the enterprise uh, as your ad admin so if you look at here all the users may join the devices to azure ad meaning they themselves they can join the device to azure ad so there's no control on that and opposed to that it gets automatically enrolled with the help of this automatic enrollment configuration that we enable for everyone in case if the user has a license the device gets enrolled into Intune but uh, if you look at the count the number of the devices count uh, will be 50 per user in Azure AD point of view but from Intune point of view it's just the five devices that we talked about the enrollment restrictions about the five different devices can be uh, set as a limit no matter whether it is a mixed or same type of devices but maximum five uh, devices a user can enter that's a limit that we have configured which is a by default setting if you want to uh, have if you want to allow more you could actually create a restriction with the device limit restriction to uh, set it to maybe 10 or whatever the uh, device limit you want to configure and one other thing is uh, what if you if you want to join your maybe let's say there's a help this guy who wants to join all the devices to Intune by enrolling and later point that device wants to give it to some somebody else so in that situation definitely he will reach the count of 5 or 10 whatever you configure so so it's not recommended that you to ask them to you know do it in that way instead you can ask them to use the device enrollment manager account so you could actually create an account or simply add that user email id uh, so that this user can add up to 100 and uh, up to 1000 devices per user can enroll with the help of device enrollment manager account so this is a, a common account that can be used for uh, enrolling more accounts or more devices uh, approximately 1000 maximum is the limit that you have with the uh, GM account or device enrollment manager account these accounts are supported in during the autopilot as well as a bulk enrollment or even the company portal also can be enrolled by using this specific account we did talk about very extensively how the process works so the process works that the missions will first join to Azure AD and then it will move to uh, MDM right now let's also understand how this MDM is available or how the machine knows that this is my MDM server and I must have to go and register so this only works automatic enrollment option in case if you have a Azure AD premium license so if you think about the previous uh, licenses methods uh, let me open and show you the, and the licenses if a user has a license called Azure AD premium uh, P1 license then this is the license I'm sorry I shown the different one but as your active directory p1 license if this license is available the automatic enrollment would work meaning if the user does not have a uh, p1 license that is your AD premium license the enrollment if you configure this automatic enrollment option also it doesn't work 
if you can recall uh, recall about Microsoft internal licensing Microsoft internal license is very straightforward and it's part of different product suits so it can be any of these products let's say if you have taken Intune for education maybe this license does not include the premium license but we are trying with EMS Phi or uh, enterprise mobility security e5 which includes even p1 license also so that's a, a azure ad premium license right in that situation the automatic enrollment will work without any issues but how about if i don't have a p1 license you might encounter in such a situation then you might have to create a cname validation records so this is this is where you will have to uh, see your users when they try to work on the enrollment options then you need to configure the required record so if you just go through down here it's mentioned these are the um, create a CNAME optional records to be created and this is where it actually needed it will redirect the creation process so you need to have in case if you are uh, using multiple domains you might have to you know choose like EU US kind of you know um, sub child domains and then it must have to register uh, the CNAME to be you know, pointed to these kind of uh, redirection should happen then automatic enrollment would work so automatic enrollment will work in a such a way that if you can create the records with a minimum license in case if you don't have a p1 license then you might have to create this kind of you know uh, in a godaddy or whatever the public uh, dns you might have to end up by creating the records but in case if you have a p1 license you don't need to do this optional setting you can straightforward use the uh, automatic enrollment option within this demo we have a p1 license so we would just go with the automatic enrollment process and we are not gonna uh, require to create these demand verification and other uh, redirectional specific cname records no need to create and within this enrollment section we also have hybrid ad joint specific let's say you have on-premises active directory machine and you're trying to join the machine automatically to intune so that they can manage with intune uh, once the device is enrolled into azure ad as well as to mdm so that option if you want to choose you need to you know install this connector and get it installed and grant the permissions on a, some OUs where you want to you know, join this machine so this is a different um, configuration which we will be doing it in once we move to uh, cloud plus on-premises environment configurations but since it's just a cloud only configuration that we are trying to learn now we would just focus on uh, automatic enrollment options but we will definitely come back here later point with the intune connector for active directory that is nothing but your on premises active directory so so that the devices can join to a specified ou automatically so this is con this is concludes all about microsoft uh, windows automatic enrollment configuration now we will think about it what what we will be doing after the enrollment definitely we have to manage the device let's say if a device is enrolled what is the next step that we are going to work on on that specific device so definitely uh, if you think in this direction if a device is available and this has been enrolled into uh, intune of course it it directly goes to uh, as a first step it goes to azure aad and then it registered or whatever that step or joining and then it goes to your intune right and post to that what you're going to do you're going to validate your complaints policies you look at here the complaints policies are important meaning let's say is this device has a windows firewall is a question and it will validate that firewall is there or not and also the antivirus configuration and or whether this antivirus is up to date or is it configured all that stuff we will validate within the compliance policies so there are certain settings that are predefined or we will be defining as the company standard or a baseline so any device that is coming and it's trying to enroll or post to the enrollment do you really want to allow them to 
give the access for network or you want to block them there itself because if they are not following the antivirus or there's no BitLocker configuration was not enabled and if a user is storing the data within this uh, device definitely it's a security concern that user might loss or maybe some kind of you know ransomware might be you know attacked and there's no antivirus next generation antivirus and then the device completely goes off even you are losing the data right that's a company's data and it's your responsibility as a company to protect the data so that's where uh, it comes the validation for the baselines of your compliance policy so we are going to create a complaints policy for our windows devices and we will measure that policy that's the first step which we are going to learn within this demo followed by let's say uh, you want to configure some additional uh, configuration let's say the wi-fi profile or vpn profile or maybe some other uh, settings that needs to be configured automatically then you would be you no know, pointing to configuration profiles in fact uh, about the complaints policies and configuration profiles we did discuss in the previous lecture in case if you have not gone through it please do check out in the description of this video link you would be you know, finding the lecture i think the lecture number is seven so we will configure the first configuration which is a compliance policies uh, within this demo and later point we would go for the configuration profiles and also within this demo we will have a look on the end user experience during the enrollment process so compliance policies click on create policies if you forget you know how uh, how to navigate here uh, it's easy if you're the beginner go to the devices we are trying to enroll the device that's why we have to click on devices and we will be working by platform in case if you're a beginner so choose a windows and then uh, windows policies and choose complaints policy and create for windows 10 or later operating system which is including windows uh, 11 enter a meaningful name in this case windows compliance baseline settings and click on next and you have a five different categories so these are the categories that uh, that are classified based on the settings that are available for example antivirus specific all the settings are under microsoft defender for endpoint so if i just click on here i should be able to see the defender for endpoint settings should be you know, configured um, according to the risk score that needs to be configured similarly system security like a password is required such kind of a you know, configuration we can we could configure like a firewall is required or antivirus is required and this spyware is required tpm is required so these becomes as a baseline for you so now think about a compliance policy if a device is trying to come uh, to your intune uh, it will validate whether we have an antivirus here or a bit locker is setting is there such kind of you know validation would happen if everything is found as it is then uh, as per the company baseline settings that you are going to define within this policy it will treat as a complaint so when i say complaint it will sh be showing as the status within the devices section as a complaint you also have an option for a system client in case if you have a system client on the machine that also should have the uh, complaints should be met as uh, complaint otherwise it also treats that configuration as a non-complaint so you have that option also available and now within this configuration i'm going to configure very basic settings uh, since it's a simple demo i would go with uh, firewall is required later point i would uh, disable enable and show you the configuration how it's going to affect the compliance and click on next uh, this will come up here a notification like it can send the email uh, with the templates all of that stuff uh, unfortunately i didn't prepare the templates or nor uh, taken a license for office 365 so i would skip this section for now and i would be adding later point on this so let's click on next but this is basically for a complaints purpose let's say if the device is not a uh, complaint it can retire uh, if the device is non-compliant from the last 15 days then we we, can, we should be able to uh, 
take out the device immediately so such kind of you know, configurations are available uh, within the actions so this is uh, automated action can be taken even you can send an email um, to the help desk team or to the end user whoever uh, you want to you know configure and then they would automatically receive and they would do the follow-up against to the device now coming back to the assignments you could actually assign this to a specific users if it is a pvc site in that case it you would be you know, adding to a specific user uh, you would uh, making them as a group and then you would be you no know, limiting that but in our case uh, I'm gonna apply this this specific setting to everyone because this is a baseline and it should be uh, measured for everyone uh, meaning on every user who has coming from a Windows enrollment or on a Windows devices even post to the enrollment also it will be validated this policy and it will measure whether the device has enabled with the provided configuration in this case the provided configuration setting is firewall is turned or not it will validate that settings and you also have an exclusions uh, if you would like to exclude you can do that very well here and click on next and create this will create a, a very simple baseline for Windows 10 devices or Windows 10 and above devices and the status of this uh, will be shown under device status or user status or per setting status also will be given so in our case we have only one setting called firewall in case if you have a bit clock or, or some other settings it would show up here and uh, once the complaints is reported back you would get a nice pie chart like this uh, the, with the number of success devices errors conflict conflicting all of that uh, status will be reported here now let's go to Windows 10 device this is my Windows 10 box uh, which is running on a virtual machine and you could see here um, this is a simple Windows 10 box let me show you here the machine configuration so this is a machine which is ending with 616 and I would like to add this machine to enroll into Microsoft Intune so the steps are very simple you can simply click on start button go to settings and uh, this is the end user point of view experience so simply go to start settings and then you have an option here to click on accounts and this is where you have an option for access work or school and simply click on connect this would come up a new window which will ask you to enter you as your AD credential if you see here uh, join this device to a local Active Directory or join this device to Azure ED. So just click on Azure ED. You do not get anything as the MBM specific. You will be getting as Azure ED. So simply click on that Azure ED specific and then click um, by giving the Chris account, Chris at landinmylab.com. So if you recall in the previous sessions we did created user account called Chris let me show you that account and this is a Chris account and Chris also have a license assigned as an Intune so he has an Intune license which is coming from all Intune users now I'll be simply entering here the user account and it is if you remember the back end the logo all of that stuff is coming during this uh, sign up process entering the password for Chris I did re-enter the password then it's a, it's asking for me to sign up for the MFA this is a normal thing that if a user is not configured his MFA it will be asking since I have a, a license and assigned um, I'm I'm asked for into the MFA the MFA is a multi-factor authentication to secure your user account this is nothing to do with your uh, into an enrollment uh, process but in my case if I want I can do it now to enroll into Intune or I can skip it for 14 days this is nothing to do with your enrollment process so I would be simply skip for now and now if you can recall now it's just asking us to accept the terms and conditions you see here these are the terms and conditions that we have set it it says that welcome to learn in my lab
and these terms and conditions outline the rules and regulations for the use of my lab website so and so all of that stuff and you can read more information here with a detailed more than 5000 or close to 5000 characters limit information and you can visit the privacy statement in case if you missed out the previous lecture let me show you that uh, we did configure under tenant administration under end user experience we did configure terms and conditions so this is where we configured all the terms and conditions and uh, here you have an option so this is where we enter all of that stuff right and you would be getting here acceptance status for example on my uh, Windows 10 user at this point of time Chris is not accepted or not prompted to accept the license so this is very important in case if you have any compliance policies so i must have to either accept or decline in case if i decline it will go back to uh, uh, i mean it, the wizard itself it gets cancelled in, in the easiest way to explain to you now i'm going to accept this so that it will accept this and as soon as i accept it in the back end um, in my intune portal i would be reporting here as he has accepted and followed by if you can you know uh, see here it clearly says that you're going to join to uh, that is chris is going to join to uh, learninmylab.com and the user account chris at learninmylab.com will become as the administrator of this device so within this windows 10 device the chris will have a full permissions in case if you think about how can you you know stop this you could actually do it from the as your active directory point of view as i said the initial steps well reflect to azure ad right so you're actually joining to azure ad not to the intune as a first step so let's click on join this would take it to uh, joining to azure ad and later point it's going to also enroll automatically into intune and now you got it uh, you all set and this device is connected to palimandy organization and you're ready to use it but as a chris you must have to switch the user account like from here and sign out and sign in as a chris account so that you get the all the user specific targets target applications all of that stuff also you would be getting in case if you do not log out and just try to use with the current user account because if you recall who am i in this case i'm the local account which is a paddy account which i'm currently working on this machine so what microsoft recommends is you should be using as a chris at lendmylab.com because this device is already enrolled into azure ad or to your intune so that's how uh, you can do it but in case uh, you might have a question that will i get uh, all the applications or all the settings that are um, that will come if I log in as a local user account instead of this so f to answer that question partially yes you will be getting some of them some of things will not be getting because uh, the things that are doesn't come with respect to the Chris at learninmylab.com specific user specific settings or uh, settings that doesn't come because the user is not logged in uh, in this case it's just the user account and you might have a question that a uh, if it if I have a target of a computer specific things will I get it if I even use as a local user account yes you would be getting the reason being if we can run a directory services registration command prompt status this is the command very important command this is the first command that I'm gonna uh, explain to you f uh, in terms of the enrollment process or as your AD specific this is very important command is like uh, CMD uh, slash status this actually talks about whether the device is registered or does it have any kind of you know, tokens all of that stuff will be you know, shown here so this device uh, specific uh, information can be you know you can easily pull up like you know this device has a tenant of this where it is logged in and uh, all that information will be shown here we will be in a minute we will be you know working on this but for now we'll simply click on done and we will switch back but before we switch back you can actually look at here if you're getting as an info button let's say if if the this specific device is joined to azure either to local active directory or to azure ad but it's not 
enrolled into Intune. Yeah, that is a possibility, right? So if that's the case, you will not have info button. What I'm trying to see is very simple. If the device is enrolled into Intune, you would be getting as info button. So if you simply click on info button, you get the device specific information. Let's say if you are the SSM admin, you normally pull the policy uh, for refresh, uh, refreshing uh, policy mission policy cycle, right? The same thing uh, to go, I mean, this mission should go back to your Intune server and get the policy information can be initiated uh, locally by clicking on this sync option. So this is equal to your local mission policy um, initiation in SSM client in case if you are the SSM admin. Okay, now let me uh, sign out and sign in with Chris account. I'm just entering here Chris account. If you notice, I'm actually logging as other user type. So you should be also doing, in case if you're trying to follow me, you should be doing the same thing. That's it. This would take you to the enrollment, uh, post to the enrollment the first time the user getting logged in. So this is how it looks like. In the meantime, let me also show you from the Intune console what happened. So the first thing is the device should come up here under all devices. You should be able to see here one device called Windows device. Or you can actually go and look at from here also. So in both the cases, it's not there. Just uh, do a quick refresh that might show up here with the device name. So still it's not reported back to the Intune console it's quite common you don't need to worry nothing we have done wrong and also but but it will immediately report to azure ad that's the first step right if you recall our uh, presentation we said it uh, it actually goes to the azure ad and it will get registered and then it will come back to microsoft intune so in this case if i just go to all devices from a paramedia active directory under devices i should be able to see this device ending with 616 and if you see here uh, it's enable status meaning it is uh, joined and also you can see azure ad joint status the type of this device is azure ad join and the owner is Chris Green and this is managed currently MDM is Microsoft Intune and the device is compliant meaning all the rules that we set are applied but it might not be showing here because we, we didn't you know properly refreshed or it might not be uh, updated the console so in a few more minutes we will be getting this uh, device specific information I have maximized the windows uh, to full screen so that you can view the complete troubleshooting with respect to the Windows enrollment. Let's have a look on it and uh, if you just go to start button and settings you should be able to see here under accounts post to the login more info information is available if you if you see this tab it indicates that the specific device is enrolled into MDM or Microsoft Intune so you can run the sync so that uh, it will initiate the latest policies and you can retrieve it and if you want to troubleshoot you can troubleshoot by generating the reports so this will generate all the required troubleshooting logs in C colon users public documents and that's where it's gonna export let's browse that logs by opening you could see here there's a file we can open this file to have more information with respect to the complete logging information. If you see all of these information, the policy informations are OMA, that's OMA URI full path and this is nothing but your OMA GM, that is a device management protocol which we discussed in the initial um, classes or the sessions we did discuss on that specific topic. So you could uh, get it the policies information and the logging if you just scroll down more information you would be you not know, getting in case if you are stuck you should be able to troubleshoot with this uh, help of simple report. Now let's have a check on how the events are generated during the enrollment process. So you can go to the applications and services logs in Microsoft Windows 
and device management enterprise diagnostic provider within this you have an op options for admin as well as the operational so if you look at in the admin you should be able to see the problems that was encounter mdm configuration has failed to set the status for a specific uh, profile configuration similarly the enrollment options all of that stuff will be available here and in case if you encounter any kind of you know problems it will be visible within this for example if you can see here mdm session failed to get the azure ead token from the sync session user token unknown so this is some problem uh, encounter so later point this was able to communicate with oma gm uh, with the protocol later point and you can you know, also get the logs and logging information directly from here so this is the log information in case if you encounter any errors during the enrollment you will come back here to see uh, because this is the place only you can get the events why it is causing some problem there's no additional log file so it, it all depends on your events and also you would uh, depend on uh, ds like cmd hyphen status this will also give you the more information on the is a device is joined or is it in azure ad policy is enabled uh, such kind of you know, information will be given and also if you are getting azure ad prt basically azure ad prt is nothing but your primary refresh token which is uh, which is an artifact for a key artifact for your azure ad authentication because the device must have to join to azure ad a later point it has to enroll so the enrollment specific issues will be shown within the event viewer here and uh, this is the first token should be consist and then it can go ahead and join into the tenant so that information will be visible very clearly if you can you know go through the dsx status as well as the event viewer you might get a doubt by this time that how this device was successfully joined to microsoft intune so you know that it's already it's actually joining to Azure AD and later point it's joining from here to here but we didn't do anything here uh, to join automatically to Microsoft Intune but it's still joined the reason is within from here to that is from Azure AD to Microsoft Intune to join on this specific machine we have not done anything but there is something that was already configured that's nothing but the a schedule task so any windows 10 machine will have a schedule task which will automatically trigger to to automatically enroll into microsoft intune and you can see that uh, i just opened the schedule task on the task machine and uh, you can navigate to microsoft windows and enterprise management within this you will have the schedule task which will automatically trigger to join the machine and you can also do the follow-up uh, for the task specific whether it is success or failure or uh, directly navigating from windows event viewer and the tasks scheduler and operations you can also find the information from there too I'll do my best to include all the troubleshooting, very common troubleshooting problems that uh, you might encounter during the enrollment process within this uh, video link and please do check out that. I think it's time for us to refresh to see whether the device is reported back or not. And you can see here the device is reported and it is showing as a compliant. Let's have a look on it by selecting the device and you should be able to get more information when you click on uh, overview for example you could actually force the policy to sync which will start syncing the policy uh, remotely you could also collect the logs directly from this machine by collect the logs in case if anything goes wrong the logs will be gets collected and this takes some time and post to that the logs will be available in the monitoring section which we will be showing later and also you can go uh, for autopilot reset quick scan quick uh, full scan all of these settings can be configured now also you can see that since this is a virtual machine you cannot get a proper serial number but if this was a physical machine you could have get the proper serial number and ownership of the machine and a model and operating system
if you click on more you get the exact last check-in time this could be an interview question also last check-in time is nothing but the policy checked by the client with the server that's a time uh, which is showing here and if you want to force one more time so this time gets changed after a few minutes so if you see here logs has been completed uh, collection uh, phase and we'll just also move further you can also integrate the team viewer connector in case if you have an enterprise uh, team viewer license you could directly integrate it and let's go to the uh, hardware inventory so you could actually get more inventory information directly from here from the hardware tab so this is where you get the more information very similar to the resource explorer but very limited information you get it so you cannot compare with the sccm that you get more information with sccm but not here and you also have a possibility in sccm to collect or extend the hardware inventory and software inventory capabilities but here it's not possible because it's a software as a service meaning this software or that's an intune server uh, which is working as a software was designed in a such a way as an offering to you very similar to office 365 you cannot do much customizations and uh, you could uh, get the more information here for the hardware and these are the discovered applications. these are the applications are available on that windows 10 machine now coming back to the complaints this talks about the uh, settings that are configured on that machine let's say if i if you could you know remember uh, we did uh, created a complaints policy in this case called windows complaints uh, baseline settings so this baseline setting might have applied already that's why it is showing as a compliant so the machine is complaint against to the policy that we created here complaints policies so let's have a look on that policy by going to device complaints so here windows compliance baseline settings this is the policy we created and uh, if you can you know look at here the firewall settings has been applied properly so in case if I change my Windows 10 machine firewall let me open up a uh, firewall.cpl uh, I'm in a Windows 10 machine and try to turn off my Windows firewall this machine will show up as the automatically so once I turned off the uh, firewall settings uh, and if I do a quick a refresh uh, of the settings it should show as the non-compliant so this will status will get changed from a green to non-compliant state in any point of the time so that's how it's going to work with respect to the complaints policy we will uh, check it in a few more minutes but in the meantime let's have a look on device configuration if you remember the profiles that's a configuration profiles if you have ever configured any of the settings that will be shown here and app configuration these are the MAM or application uh, protection policies or any custom settings would you know come up here under app configurations and endpoint security configuration any of the antivirus specific settings if you have configured it will come this is where the bit lock or key will be shown you can rotate the key also by simply right clicking and user experience here you can have a look on uh, the experience of the performance of the machine and device diagnostics so these are the uh, status we have requested to uh, check the device diagnostics which were pending in this case so any of the applications that we pushed will be shown here so this is how uh, it's going to work let's wait for the complaints to be changed so let me quickly refresh let's do a quick refresh and uh, it's still in a green the status if you see it's green but it might change because uh, we did uh, turned off and we did even sync also so you can see device complaints is now 
change to not complaint so we can check out what is that setting is not complaint you might have more settings like complaint specific if you can you know recall the settings that we talked about five different category of the settings uh, which which talked about a firewall or maybe antivirus or maybe a bit clock or, or or the password kind of set, settings all of that may show here as a non complaint or complaint so that's how it's going to work and the, in in another few more minutes this becomes as a non complaint and since it's a non complaint we could even send a automated email if you could you know recall if any of this baseline policy is not complaint we can take an action saying to automatically email the specific settings so that also we can do it which we'll be doing in the next demo but this is what the pie chart this reporting is very limited and you would be getting this uh, report as a not immediate basis it takes some time because it's a cloud uh, cloud service so it is currently the green status and it might change after a few more minutes let's do a quick refresh that should uh, change the status back to non-compliant let me take it back to devices a windows device and this is where it's showing as a non-compliant because the setting which is under device complaints the policy name called uh, windows complaints baseline settings within this there's a setting called firewall which is non-compliant uh, this setting is expected and it was not found okay and these are the status for the built-in device complaints policies which will normally validate at least one of the policy must be assigned meaning the built-in device complaints policy will measure uh, to have at least one complaints policy as a standard that's what it says and this uh, policy gets applied for all the devices no matter it's windows or ios so this is all about the complaints device complaints as well as the configuration for enrollment and in the previous uh, few minutes back we did even collected the logs uh, let's have it ch uh, check on those logs whether they are collected or not so if I just go back here div uh, collect diagnostics or completed so all I have to do is just go back to device diagnostics earlier it was in the uh, status for the downloading or uh, pending and now I should be able to download and this will give me a zip file which contains consists of lot a lot of logs and registry keys all of that information so maybe anywhere from 23 to 24 different uh, folders will be available within this if I just open up so you have 51 different folders and these all of the folders consist of different different settings and different registry keys all that information will be coming up in a XML format and this is very useful this XML file it tells about every point of for the troubleshooting purpose it talks about all of that information including uh, it would not you know all, all all of the event logs and logs that are specific will be including the registry keys will be shown here and this is very useful in case of troubleshooting we would be referring these logs thank you for watching this i hope you really enjoy this session and we'll catch you in the next uh, lecture please do subscribe and like and share and comment